I feel like you need to find out what's broken in you that makes you chase something that's never going to fill you. Whatever that may be, you need to find that thing out because I, I feel like I was, I was raised as a hoe. Like I was mm-hmm. growing up as a black man, every old black man, I was like, how many girlfriends you got, little man? Huh? You got, te- you got 10 girlfriends? Oh, mm-hmm. high five, little man. Mm-hmm. But then you go from be strong, be tough. You don't show nobody your feelings. And then you meet a woman who need all that from you mm-hmm. and you don't know where to pull from. So then you stuck like, okay. I got all this collateral damage, but I ain't got nothing to show for it because I feel like particularly for me, and I always use me as an example. So no matter what I'm telling people what they should do because I'm married, I'm some kind of expert. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like God let me do me until I came to the end of myself, but he knew I had to do all that in order to become who I am. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I've had moments where I was celibate. I was celibate for like a long time and I had women call me gay and I was like, that's a weird feeling. They're like, you gay? I'm like, no, I'm trying to protect you from this monster. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to manage this thing before I get married because right. most of the thing, if you can wild out and have an appetite that's ridiculous because the more the monster eat the more the more you feed the monster the more the monster want to eat and then you think mm-hmm. when you get married your appetite just goes away and it doesn't your appetite is the same but you can't expect a woman who works eight hours a day take care of your two kids to have the same single sex that you've been craving yourself she can't compete with your fantasy right she can't compete you having threesomes once every weekend your woman that loves you, she can't compete with your fantasy and it's not fair. It's unmanageable. So you got to figure out what's broken in you to make you desire this thing that there's no end to. And like just being an entertainer, like being an entertainer, the hardest part is not the talent of it. The hardest part is like balance. Because Mm -hmm. if you're funny and a good looking guy, you're going to get all the sex you've ever wanted your entire life, especially when you didn't know you was cute until you start performing. And then now you get all this access. You got to manage that. Just like when you perform, you get all the drinks you want. When you perform at a comedy club, you're getting free drinks at the comedy club. Mm -hmm. Or when you travel Mm -hmm. and you're on the road and all they got is fried food, you got to manage that. So your sexual appetite is the same thing. If you don't manage that appetite before you get married, not after you get married, because that paperwork and that ring don't change your appetite. You're responsible for that, which is why I mentioned earlier that marriage will make you reconcile everything you ran from in your singleness. And again, it's cool to sleep with a bunch of chicks and have all that collateral damage, but I realized I was making a bunch of women crazy and it was my fault because Mm -hmm. I've always functioned as a husband, but I rarely met the woman who I considered my wife. So because a woman was in my space and I enjoyed her company, we Mm -hmm. would have sex. And Mm -hmm. to me, it wasn't no crime to me. And I would be honest, like, yo, I ain't looking for nothing. But then later on, you can't give a woman husband penis and then be there for her and then call her crazy when she, her heart and her spirit desires more from you. If that makes sense. Like I'm, I'm that having, makes perfect sense. That I'm giving her like sense. great sex on purpose, trying to break her. That's pride and ego. Like you're trying to mm-hmm. break her to where she like, she give that little look where you like, no, she gone and can't control her world no more. Like right. little look that, <laughs> right. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, but it's funny. Don't make me pee on you. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Like, it's yeah, nah. funny you say that I When had, you do all that, mm-hmm. when you do all that, you're creating an appetite in a woman that you can't sustain. And I knew mm-hmm. I was doing that. But later on, I was like, a woman don't deserve that. And then when I got older as a man, I realized it's import- more important for me to instead of feeding my ego, I got to protect my life. Mm-hmm. So I went from trying to smash as many chicks as possible to like, you know what? I'm sleeping with this chick. She ain't got no sense of humor. And I'm a comedian. What am I doing with my life? So I got to protect my life because I know, again, I always function like a husband and I'm mm-hmm. connected to God even while I'm doing my mess. Mm-hmm. And I realized I shouldn't allow everybody in my space just because I have access to them. Because being, again, being an entertainer, you have all these people that love you because they see the light and the little, the little uh, mist around you. Like, oh my God, he's such a whatever. And then you take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, it's, and then you have sex and y'all become friends or whatever. But at the same time, you're like, I shouldn't let her in my space because my light is more important than me feeding my ego. Because in order for me to stay, sustain, I got to protect, like, why am I feeling depressed right now? Why am I feeling insecure right now? This ain't me. But again, mm-hmm. you got these soul ties and now you're mm-hmm. feeling weird because you done slept with somebody you shouldn't even had in your space. You shouldn't even had a phone conversation with them. But again, she cute and I'm pursuing it and whatever. So right, yeah. right. You got you to manage that. And I'm sorry for cutting you off. What were you saying? 